What's up? Thanks for watching. We're gonna do something different today because I'm not home. I am actually at work right now. And I'm having dinner in the car, like I normally do when I'm at work. Um, and I didn't wanna eat by myself. I figured, hey, I could film for the Dipple Clan, you know? You guys are my Dipple Clan. So, I figured I'd start filming as I'm eating. And maybe we do a little story time. So, I have... The light has... Does no justice. But, it's a very cold day today. Here in uh, the city I live in. I want to say it is... Um, let me check um let me see twenty five degrees and um I will be working until six in the morning. I can't disclose who I work for, but um I can tell you that. I have, I do enjoy my job. I have a lot of fun in my job. Um, so normally what I do, I plan ahead what I wanna eat when I actually come to work and I treat myself to something good. Obviously not this good every time. I only did it with the intentions of making this uh, mukbang video for y'all. And um, that way, um, what's it called? We get to do this together and um, I get to entertain you guys and then I'm not going to be by myself, you know, per se. So anyways, um, I picked up some Red Lobster and I picked up the, oh, actually, look, you guys, it's actually colder. I don't know if y'all can see that, but see can y'all see that I think you can it is 21 degrees the lowest is gonna get is 18 so it's a very cold outside um, <clears throat> so I figured while I have a little story time with you guys we can sorry let me focus that very better um, we can chit chat and I can eat my pasta I picked up some lovers uh, no lobster lovers crab meat linguine and this is like my favorite pasta now i'll be here for several hours i don't think i'm gonna finish this all in one sitting but i've ordered this and um their menu has changed a lot for the past few years but they haven't gotten rid of this pasta. And I'm so glad because I started eating this pasta when I was 13 years old in California. It was like my very first red lobster experience. I had never been in my foster mom at that time, uh, Arnita. She was um, a lobster, um, a lobster lover in a lobster uh red lobster restaurant uh junkie she was there like every weekend mm. and whenever we got um our grades she would ask us what did we want did we want money and allowance or did we want you know to eat somewhere specific and I always made it to asking her to take me there um so that's where I discovered this pasta and ever since then it's just been the thing I ordered I've never ordered pizza y'all at no red lobster I've never had their pizza I have some people tell me it's not too good hold on let me lower the window it's the heater's too hot in here um some people complain about the pizza, but it's like, dude, who goes to Red Lobster to have lobster pizza? Like, I've never had lobster pizza. I love 
to eat lobster, but I wouldn't think of having it in pizza, you know? Um, anyway, so I got the um, linguine pasta and I have two lobster tails here. I can't wait to get into those. But check this out. I'm gonna order from Fine Dining and y'all gonna give me a, a Coke, I'm sorry, a Pepsi in a can. <sighs> this drink is like 75 to a dollar, right? 75 cents to a dollar. I should have got a bigger drink or at least you guys should have given me like two cans because now I have to baby my drink. And I have um, picked up earlier um i don't know if y'all can see it the lighting here is pretty poor anyways this is a venti london film uh which is pretty much uh, english breakfast tea i have six pumps of sugar-free vanilla in there and heavy cream because when i was on my way to work today i thought i was gonna be a good girl and do like calorie counting carb counting a little bit of a keto but now I am here with a big bowl of pasta. And um, that didn't happen, did it? That pl that plan went down the drain real quick. But this is how I see it. You work hard, you got to treat yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can't be stingy to yourself. If you work hard, sorry. If you work hard, treat yourself. You know what I'm saying? And I would have picked up Chick-fil-A because that's where I was going to go. I don't know if it's due to the weather. But um, it was close. I'm just like, dude, it's 8 o'clock. They're not supposed to close to 10. But I ain't going to lie to you guys. It's pretty bad out here. I am going to be spending more time off the road than I am out um so since i'm on my lunch break i could do whatever i want on my lunch break right so um i'm here with you guys right now but for the rest of the night i'll probably more be a little bit well not a little bit super cautious of where i'm gonna go next um because i'm in a company vehicle so you want to be responsible with that but there was a ton of accidents today and i don't know if y'all seen the uh incident that happened in fourth 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 worth with the um, um the i think it was like a, i don't know if it was 16 vehicles or several vehicles piled up on the highway um i think yesterday and there was like six fatalities i don't i didn't follow the story all the way today so i don't know if there was any more but that is so sad you guys i mean those people excuse me left home woke up that morning you know thought it was a normal day and left home to go to work or whatever errand they had and you know life is short man you just never know what's around the corner so we shouldn't take anything for granted mm, so good Anyways, let me get into this lobster so y'all can, can see. Now, I'm seeing here, they didn't give me any butter. But, let's look at them. Let's see. Yum. I have one. This one looks amazing. Check this out, you guys. Ah! Look at that big old chunk of meat. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. And then we have this one. This one's smaller. Ah! Oh my God, you guys. I don't want to drop my lobster. Look, <clears throat> that looks awesome. Awesome. So one of them is a rock lobster and the other one's main. I'm a Maine lobster fan. It's a lot more buttier. Um, 
chewier, softer, tender. The rock lobster is just too hard, you guys. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's still lobster, so I like it, but I prefer, you know, Maine. So this is Maine. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yes, it's so good. But I don't have any butter, so I'm pretty upset. Let me check my bag. <clears throat> I have looks like biscuits. I love the biscuits. They're so yummy. <gasps> yes, I have no butter. They gave me fries. But I mean, you know, when you got lobster and then you got fries. Yes, they did give me butter. Check this out, you guys. It's so cold outside that it gotten hard. I can't have this. It's not their fault though. They gave it to me. And I want to say this is probably tartar sauce. Anyways, you got lobster and then you got french fries. What do you, what, what do you pick? I'm going for lobster, baby. If I'm going to do the calories, you got to just do the right thing, right? Pick wisely. Anyways, so I don't want to make this video too long. Let's get into what story I wanted to tell you guys. Um, so terrible. Let me get a napkin. <clears throat> Tissue back box on here on demand. Anyways, when I was um younger, um and even now that I'm much older, I ain't old, but you know, I'm much older than when I was in high school. Um, I didn't like watching scary movies because for some reason or another, I had always experienced some weird stuff around like the grandma house or just weird stuff, right? So I knew not to mess with like scary movies or anything like that and when i went into foster care you know people's energy people have energies and depending on the people's energy is the kind of stuff you feel at their house some stuff is like uneasy and some homes just feel so peaceful that you don't feel the night i was in several homes as i grew up to know that you know and uh, when i did get to a house that excuse me um was that wholesome I just never wanted to be changed out to a different house, but it was beyond my control. You know, you get moved around. Sometimes foster parents stop taking care of kids and they move on to doing other things. But so I had moved into um, my foster mom. I had several homes, like I said, but I moved into my foster mom's house, which I consider my mom. And her environment, her home was beautiful and she treated me amazing. When it was time to go for independent living, independent living is um, a program available to kids that do well, are responsible, and they can be trusted. In other words, I was a bookworm in school. I played all the sports, you know, softball, ran track. Played tennis. So I stayed busy. And um, she always like, every time it was my report card, she would reward, you know? It was the best home I was at. But now like I said I was turning 16. And the court encourages you to get out there and learn the real world before you turn 18, you know? Because eventually you're going to be on your own. So I took all the classes that I needed to take. And I finally got to my apartment. I had my own apartment, you guys, at 16. It was the best ever. You know, such a huge accomplishment. And I have to have roommates, different roommates from different backgrounds, different traumas, you know? Sometimes you think you have it bad, 
But when you get to talking to other kids that are in the system, you find out that that is not the case. There is somebody out there with the worst case. You know what I'm saying? And one thing I found out when I was in foster care, at first I didn't want to talk about it so much because I saw everybody had like the perfect family, you know? But I went to a Christmas party my first year in foster care and I found out that 90% of my school was a foster kid. I was in shock because nobody really talks about that. Everybody's pretty private because a lot of kids at that age are not gonna respect what's going on in your personal life. And they're gonna just make fun of you. I didn't wanna talk about it. It was a very private thing. Until I, so I show up to that bird, um, Christmas party, I was, I was in shock. But I also felt for them because I understood why they wore the same shoes all the time. I understood why they wore the same clothes or the same backpacks from last year because you know, when you're in foster care, it's a low budget, man. A lot of parents don't do it for the fact that they care. A lot of them do it for the money. It's a business, you know? You're just a walking coin as you walk into their house. They don't really care about you, you know? And um, that's when I realized that, man, it's just shocking, you know, to see where this was this was at as far as uh foster care and all that and anyways i wanted to get out of the system you know whenever i was ready so that's why i took the step to doing independent living the program right so i'm going way too far off topic guys sorry anyways when i got to the apartment i was i was oh, man i can't even find words to describe how excited i was to finally have like my own place you know and uh, I met my roommate. They paired me with somebody that was complete opposite than me. I was more into hip hop, R&B, you know, Spanish music, etc. But she was like a gothic, y'all. Like she was gothic, and <clears throat> nothing wrong with it, you guys. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying you know anything about it. It's just that we were two different styles, you know. I'm in Inglewood, California, going to school out in Inglewood, and like she's from like Pasadena. So we went to two opposite sides of like cities, you know? And we lived right off of Crenshaw and Wilshire. Anyways, my roommate, I don't know if she was into anything. I don't think she was. I think that, you know, apartments sometimes hold the energy, like I said. And if a previous owner was into something weird, that spirit's gonna get trapped in that apartment in those four walls or whatever happened somebody could have been killed there and i don't know you know anyways at nighttime my first night i just felt something was watching me the whole time then i closed my eyes and i'll just i'll try to rest you know i haven't like really felt anything weird until like everything was completely dark and then she'd gone to sleep her apartment i'm sorry her bedroom was on the opposite side of the apartment across the living room and the restroom but i started to feel this weird presence in my room man like someone was watching me sleep like you know when you feel someone staring at you but it was like this weird scary energy that I had to open my eyes and like sit on my bed and I was like, what is this? You know, I just, I wasn't comprehending. Like eventually I started hearing scratches on the door, scratches on the wall, like scratches, you guys. I started to scare the living hell out of me, you know? And this was every night, every night something another layer of fear another layer of like the ghost brought me a whole new um uh, i don't know 
a whole new tactic to scare me, I guess. So, man, dude, like, I was so freaking out. Like, I didn't want to be at that apartment anymore. But being in foster care, you really don't have a choice to, like, oh, let me pack and go, you know? Where am I going to go? So, it got to the point at nighttime. I used to call my friend. She was a little older than me. You know, at 16. I still didn't have a job yet. I hadn't been out to the um, corporate America or anything like that. Not even like a small little job I, I hadn't had yet. Other than like tutoring for my teacher. I'm going to get into the biscuits. I'm probably going to have them. I have three biscuits. And um, anyways, I got into tutoring my um, teacher's uh, ESL students. Um, and then, you know, help her with like tutoring for the little kids after school anyways that's the only job i had like had and she used to do it mainly because she knew i was like in foster care so she was just trying to get me to have extra cash in my pocket because um my foster mom didn't give me like any lunch money to go to school so i had to hustle here and there for some money you know and i always did it in a decent way so tutoring it was and then that program used to give me some money a month, like a check. But it was meant for my my phone bill. Not cell phone bill, you guys. House bill. Like house phone bill. Like a landline. And I had to budget for groceries. And for the light bill. And whatever was left, I had to buy a bus pass. Because, uh, mind you, I went to school out in Crenshaw and Wilshire. I mean, I don't know who I was watching, but... I had to take three buses, three public buses to get to school. And, you know, so much had changed in my life that I didn't want to change. I didn't want to change school because a lot had already changed for me. I felt like school was the only thing that stayed, you know, helping me cope with everything that was going on. So I called my foster mom. She already had taken somebody else in. So my space was gone, you know. I couldn't go move back in with her. I called my social worker. She's not answering the phone. Because once they take care of you guys and dump you somewhere, they forget about you. You're one less headache they got to deal with, you know? So, this one night, it got real bad. You know, I tried to kind of block the whole thing of the presence of someone watching me. Like, what I was feeling. And I was laying on my belly. You guys. I fell asleep. And when I woke up. My, mind you. I was alert. I wanted to wake up. But I couldn't move. I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't scream. I felt like I was locked in chain. And stuck. I felt like something heavy was on, back, uh, on my back. Just holding me. Restraining me. And it was the scariest feeling ever. You know, when you just want to wake up and you just can't wake up. And, um, that day, I knew some bad spirit was in that apartment, you guys. I got up and, uh, finally managed to wake up. I was sweating. And um, immediately, I remember my grandma had told me, you should always look for God. You should always try to have spiritual connection. I don't know what religion you guys are, but, you know, we need to have a spiritual life of something. And, and to me, it's God. And I got on my knees and I prayed and I cried. And it was so scary, you guys, because... I'm by myself. My roommate was gone partying with her boyfriend. And for some reason, she been in, she was older than me. She had like a few months left in the program. So she was about to be 18. And they let her go like at a later curfew. My curfew was 10 p.m. So she was at home that night. I was by myself in that whole apartment. And the next morning, I was just, I didn't want the sun, you know, to go, to go down. I was so worried about the nighttime because of what was going on in my apartment. And, you know, I, I had like 
a landline. I didn't have a cell phone. Nowadays, everybody got a cell phone. You're probably 10 years old, you got a cell phone. Maybe younger than that, you know? Now, back then, and um, everybody was walking around with those uh, Nokia light up cell phones. I don't know if y'all remember that. If you're from my time, or you'll know, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, so I, I called up on anybody that was home at that time or was at a job that I could talk to at nighttime. And I used to leave them on speaker. I'll leave them on speaker for you guys. Just so that I know that they're there and I didn't feel by myself, you know. And I can actually get some sleep. Because I had to be at school in the morning. And mind you, I had to wake up at 4 in the morning. To shower get ready so by five i was already at the bus stop to get to school school didn't start till eight o'clock so i had to get sleep and then i played sports so i had to get some rest but it was very nearly impossible if i didn't have nobody on the phone with me to make me feel safe and when i prayed it got worse it's like it got upset it was weird. I didn't let that stop me, you know. Um, I continued to pray and, you know, try to find some kind of comfort to where I didn't feel lonely. This right here is calamari. I'm already full, you guys. I'm not going to finish all this. I hope y'all don't get mad at me. I hope that y'all can hear me because I just realized the mic is tucked in I didn't actually have a stand to do this but you know what I'm gonna end up getting one so I can do more videos like this and y'all can get a little bit more more videos more often from me because I want to be connected with you guys um you know um we just we'll try that out anyways Eventually, it all stopped. The scratching, the presence of something weird. But how did that happen? I was cleaning my closet one day and I didn't have much, you guys. I really had a little bit of clothes, a little bit of shoes. I didn't really have a lot of things, you know? Um, you get an allowance once a year to just go shopping for the year and it's probably two hundred dollars i think or f 150 for the entire year you guys and this you had to cover like underwear socks shoes um you know a sweater and clothes so it's an there is no way 150 is gonna cover for an entire year clothes supply you know so i used to just always take care extra care of my stuff because i knew that i wouldn't get an allowance till the following year and then um I was cleaning out the little stuff that I had in my big closet. It was like a huge closet and I didn't even fill it up. Um, and I moved the rug because I wanted a vacuum and I was like super deep cleaning that day. You guys, I found a jar. I found a jar about this size. It was like a mason jar, you know, those glass jars. It had water inside and it had a little red pillow with, um, you know, those... Um, when you sew, you have those little pins with like the color heads. It had like a green pin and a red one. And there was like a bunch of them stabbed onto that pillow. And the water was more like an apple juice color. It was weird. Maybe it could have been urine. I don't know. I mean, man, I'm just now thinking about that. It's disgusting. But I think I found a jar of some kind of voodoo, you guys. And whoever lived in that apartment before I got there, maybe even before foster care or the system took over that property, maybe they did something you know and that's why that energy was there and when i found it i got scared i'm like oh my god whatever this is i don't want it to get stuck to me because i touched it you know so um hold on you guys sorry um um i i didn't want to mess with it and what i ended up doing i just took it out to the trash can and i got rid of it and i you know i I was just so weird out that I found something like that. I didn't know anything about voodoo back then, but when I called my friend, 
she came through and i'm like dude is in a trash can we looked at it together and she's like uh-uh girl somebody somebody done some voodoo around here and and that's probably the energy that you're feeling in this apartment you know so that's what fixed that issue voodoo is real you guys you know <laughs> um can definitely tell you that bad spirits are there just like we have good there's evil you know and um i'm just glad that i mean i'm 16 i'm supposed to be there all the way through i turned 18 i had like some time left and i couldn't be living in that kind of situation you know so anyways that if y'all have any scary stories or experiences like real true experiences i like to hear them but that is the main reason why i don't care how much you say you're gonna pay me call me a chicken i don't care i don't watch scary movies you guys i really don't because that stuff is real man you know at risk that stuff is real people's energy is real you know you, you whatever you put out is what you get in return and i'm a high believer of that and when i was 16 i didn't know any better you know i didn't know much you know i was a teenager I'm putting it up. I'm probably going to eat some more later. I am stuffed. <clears throat> and it's probably time for me to get to uh, my other site. It's uh, 10.54. Excuse me. Oh, look, you guys. I still have... Um... Ooh, check this out, you guys. Ooh, that looks so yummy. Ooh, it's, um, it's got lobster meat in it. It's mashed potatoes with cheese. I am not hungry anymore but anyways thank you for watching thank you for joining me for dinner again like i said i'm just here at work and took some time to have my meal before it gets too late and i wanted to share some time with you guys because i'll tell you i have filmed two videos you guys two okay and they've been asmr I went feeling at two ASMR, ASMRs last night. So the first video was an ASMR. It was sushi, you guys. So I bought some like professional chopsticks. And I normally just eat with the ones that they give you when you take takeout. You guys, this chopstick was so smooth that when I grabbed my uh, sushi and I dipped it in the soy sauce or you know sriracha whatever i was gonna eat most of them will like slip off and fall and and then i had to go dunking in there digging out for it and by the time it already falling apart it was a, it was a nightmare and i said there's no way i can post this on the on my channel and like i don't want to offend anybody you know y'all gonna roast me for that but next time i'm gonna make sure i get the right chopsticks that i'm normally i'm used to eating with you know i just wanted to have some authentic you know asian uh store purchased chopsticks and i i bought those they're kind of heavy too so you know i'm having to hold the sushi plus the chopstick that was slipping in between my fingers and then the, the sushi is like falling off and when i'll go for the dipping it's just like boom, you know right into the soy sauce and i'm just like oh my god so i couldn't help it but start laughing and then it was no longer asmr right so <laughs> i spend what 60 dollars on sushi plus the time that it took me to film and then the calories that i had to eat to eat you know what i'm saying so i'm just like no i am not posting this no matter what i'm just not gonna i'm just one of these days or later on down the road i'll make you guys um a blooper video and i'll share everything that it takes to make these asmr videos it is not easy you guys it's a lot of work and then the other time i'll share this other time this was last night it was cold and i'm not supposed to be eating that late but i felt like you know what i want to do story time with them like i want to not just do asmr because i'm very talkative if you know me i love talking i'm a very social butterfly i just like to talk to people you know and now that i'm doing this that's one of the things that i wanted to do you know it's with the community get to talking meet new people you know a whole social thing that i'm just like super excited to be part of and what's it called i wanted to do story time so i went to mcdonald's and i got me um first of all i wanted a chicken sandwich they're gonna tell me they don't make chicken sandwiches past midnight 
again y'all i live in a small city in texas west texas it's a desert and things here just close after a certain time and they stop making chicken fry uh sandwich or whatever that is what is it the number four whatever the number four on the mcdonald's menu is it's a chicken club sandwich i think they stopped making that they weren't even making um happy meals i'm just like what do y'all have it was like six options anyways so i went through all that trouble you guys on top of the fact that it was very cold and when i went out i found a vehicle that was on its uh roof like it was upside down completely the person was stuck in there and there was like three state troopers with the vehicle awaiting a tow truck so when I saw that, I'm like, oh my God, I don't think this was like such a good idea coming out this late, but I didn't think it was gonna be that icy on the roads, you know, cause they had treated the roads. So again, this last few days has been really cold. And um, I see the vehicle upside down and I'm just like, oh my God, I need to be extra careful. You know, I got my food and I got home and I had everything already set up thanks to Dippa Productions. Um, they had already set up everything. And when I get there, I'm ready to eat everything's good everything's working out good we do like three little test runs real quick and tell me why you guys i'm done eating i'm done filming and i'm just like let me upload this you know and i replay the video i sound like a robot my mic for some reason i guess maybe i tapped it i don't know but my audio was messed up i was so mad because that's day two second failure and I'm just like, I wonder if everybody goes through this, but it's part of it. You know, again, it's a hobby. I'm enjoying while I'm doing this. I just don't understand how I just bought this mic. It's a Yeti mic. I bought it brand new from the Yeti store and I'm getting a mic that's not giving me a good performance. Like I will get it if I bought it from Amazon because I, I know I found it on Amazon, but their stuff is refurbished. And I figured, no, I don't want to invest something refurbished. I want something that's going to be good quality. And I don't have to be worrying about it later on. But look what happened. So I am going to be returning that mic. If y'all don't see me do any ASMRs for the next few days, y'all know what's going on. I will try to do these kind of videos for now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to always eat something like this heavy. Because honestly, I'm not trying to gain weight. Um, trying to lose weight right now this was actually my first meal today and I like to stay consistent with that personal goal on top of continuing with you guys um, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and end it now I see that it's dragging on to more than what I normally like to keep my videos at but I've enjoyed doing this video for you guys having dinner with you guys tonight and I look forward to our next video. Thanks for watching. Lots of love. Hugs and kisses. Y'all have a good night. Stay safe.